Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to talk about creating a tic-tac-toe game with Python and PySimple GUI. Now, tic-tac-toe is a pretty normal game. You probably already are familiar with it. You basically uh, create a little grid of uh, three by three squares, basically, and then you choose whether you want to be X or O, and who goes first, and then you just start hitting um, X's and O's. A lot of people will do this, uh, a lot of kids will do this, on a piece of paper and just use their pen or pencil and draw the grid and do X's and O's or hearts or whatever they whatever shape they want to do. That's the basic idea. We are going to try to create the same idea with Python and PySimple GUI. So PySimple GUI then doesn't come with Python, so we need to install it. And we also want to use Pillow, which is uh, the Python imaging library. And what that allows us to do is it let, lets us put images on our buttons. And so um, I want to create some X's and O's, and I want it to look nice. So I'm going to use Pillow to load PNG files for my images. So to go ahead and install PySimple GUI in Pillow, all you need to do is do a python3-m pip install PySimple GUI space Pillow. And that'll install everything that you need to be able to run this uh, code. All right, let's switch over to my uh, editor. I like to use Wingware, and so that's what I'm going to use here. And I'm just going to show you the code that I created and explain, you know, how it all works. So the first step in making a game is to figure out, you know, what do you want it to look like? And I always find it useful to create the bare bone basics of an application, just to make sure that I know how, how to run it. So in this case, we're going to create a Python GUI window with tic-tac-toe in the top line or for the the title of the window. And we're going to have a blank layout for now because I don't know exactly how I want to do it. And then we just read the events. Obviously this doesn't look like a tic-tac-toe board. So we have some work ahead of us. So let's go back to my project and we'll add some UI to it. All right. So let's make this a little bit bigger and take a look at this code. So the first thing is I want to create a folder that holds different files. So I created a blank PNG, an OPNG, and an XPNG. These PNGs are what goes on the buttons that I'm going to create. Um, so I want a blank button so that you know no one has no one has actually chosen to draw an X or an O there. And then, then I want to switch it out for an O or an X when somebody clicks on it. To do that sort of thing, we create a layout that includes nine buttons. So for row in range three, so each row will have three buttons. And then for column in each row, we have three. So we have three columns and three rows. Three times three is nine. So we should have a grid now of nine white buttons. You can choose what color it is by typing white comma white here. If we wanted to, we could probably make that a black button or a red button or whatever you want. But because I'm putting a blank image on there, I want it to be white so that the white blends in with the blank image that I have on there instead of like highlighting that there's an image on it. Next, we have the same kind of code here, tic-tac-toe, but this time we're passing this layout that is no longer empty to our window. So the next step is to actually run the code and see how it turns out. So if we run this example, what we should see is a nice grid. And it has a bunch of buttons that don't do anything because we haven't hooked those up yet. So that is step three. Let's open up step three, and we're going to make this more interesting by adding the X's and O's as well. So to do that, we will add an update game method. Or in this case, it's a function because we don't need to do object-oriented programming when it comes to PySimple GUI. Everything can be functions. So updating the game, you pass in a button object and the player, and I just keep track of which player is which by saying original player equals player. If player is X, Use the player x image path, which is up here, assets x, assets o. And that just tells us which player we're playing as, and it swaps because once you know x is played, then it's o's turn, and once o is played, it's x's turn. Next, we open up the image. Um, you need to use uh, just the way it works, you have to use uh, the IO module to make it work properly across platform. So we open it up with pillow. And um, we save it off kind of temporarily so that the 
the code will work correctly inside of PySimple GUI. It's kind of a hack in a way, but it makes it makes it work the way it's supposed to. And I, I've run into issues if I don't do this, like on Mac. So anyway, we'll update um, the data. And yeah, what, what we're basically doing here is we're kind of reading it in to into memory, the image into memory. And we're saying image data equals bio, bio .get value. So what that's doing is it's getting the bytes IO object, which is kind of binary data, and passing it in uh, to the button. And we set some metadata, and then we run it, and we return the player again. Down here, the code is almost exactly the same, except that now we're checking to see if the event is a tuple. If it is, um, we go ahead and call update game, basically. And this is kind of this is a little bit hacky because I mean, the event normally you won't you won't check to see if an event is a tuple. But this is just a quick and dirty way to make it work. So if we run this code, now we should be able to still get this up. And now when we click on the buttons, it makes X's and O's happen. But you can see, you know, if I make a bunch of buttons up, it doesn't doesn't end the game. There's no way to restart it. If I get three in a row, it doesn't end the game or mark it as a win. So, you know, we're going to add the rest of the game logic now. So in our final version, we'll have all the logic that we need. Let's start here at the bottom so you can kind of see what's happening here. So the first bit of code is still the same. Still have the same layout. We have ways to, to win, which is gets the win configurations. Let's see what that's about. So here are the different ways to win. Horizontal ways to win, vertical ways, and diagonal ways. And what this is is a list of lists saying which buttons horizontally are you need to win, which buttons vertically you need to win. So top down, top middle ones down, and the top right row, or diagonal, you know, crosswise or away. And this is just a quick way to say this is how you win the game. Okay, so I just grabbed that and I create a big list of lists of those. Um, we set the player to the initial player, which I think is X. And then in the while true, we're still using the if instance equals tuple. And we do, um, we grab the which button was clicked. We update the game accordingly, which you've already seen. And then we check to see if the user has won yet. So every time you click a button, we're going to check and see if you've won. So let's take a look at check F1. In this, we pass that list of lists of winning configurations. We set to winner to none right now, and then we just loop through those winning configurations and see and check the button metadata for each of the buttons in that configuration. So you may realize if we go back up here to let's see where is that update game? We're setting that metadata. We're setting each button to X or O in the metadata. So now when we go back to checking F1, we're going to create a an object here that says, you know, does the are all these buttons in the game? Um, what are the what are the metadata? And then we're going to check and see, you know, did we win or not? So did you is it one? None, not in game pieces, and length is equal to one. If you have one, you pop out um, a game piece to grab the winner out of it, and then you mark the win using that configuration that you're currently on in the for loop. And then I'm going to return true for one, and the winner as uh, X or O. Um, if this falls out of this for loop because nobody won, I'm going to check and see if there is a tied game. So here we have a, a list comprehension doing the button metadata. Basically, it sees checks to see if all of the button data button metadata is set, and if it is, then we can say. Um, it's a tied game. And that's what we're doing here. If none is not in the data, that means that all the metadata is set, and thus, you know, it's a tied game. So we say no one has won, and um, there was no winner. Whereas here, because it's still going to say winner is none up here, because we didn't set winner in this loop or this loop. Finally, you know, if, if it, no one is tied and nobody has won, we just say false, nobody's won yet. And so there is no winner yet, and we keep playing. So let's go back down here. So here we check to see if the winner winning configuration is not false. 
And then if it is a, isn't, we can ask the user to play again. And we can say if we should restart or not. So should restart is set by asking the user if they should play again. So we check to see if the user is none, then it's a tied game, or yeah, if player is none. Otherwise we say, you know, which player has won in our message. And we create another layout, because this time we're going to pop up a little pop-up window that's going to say, you won, and it'll say who won, or tied game, and then it'll ask, do you want to play again? And you can hit the restart button to play again, or you can just quit. Then we return true if the event is restart, otherwise it's false, which means to quit, and we just quit out of the game. Okay, so let's go down here. So yeah, if it's false, we break out of the for loop, which is our event loop, and the window closes. Otherwise, we reset the game. Let's take a quick look at that, that function. So for that, we open up another in-memory uh, file. We grab the blank image and read it in. And then we loop over all of the buttons and turn them back into blank buttons again. All right, let's see how this game plays. One thing that I'd like to improve about this game is to have like a little dialogue up here and like give the rules and say you can choose X or Y or X or O I guess in this case or let the user pick a a different um, thing because since we're using images here you know it could be turtles versus snakes or you know Mario versus Luigi or you know whatever you want images you want to use that'd be a fun enhancement to add to this game. Anyway, let's go ahead and click on these. Let's see, we'll make X win this time. And so, it says X won. Do you want to play again? Restart or quit? Let's try restarting it. And this time, I think we'll make O win. So we'll make X do some silly things. And we'll make O win, and now O has won. Do you want to play again? This time we'll just quit. So, there's a lot of cool things we could add to this. We could add music. We could add that, that functionality of letting the user choose. XRO at the beginning or upload their own image. Um, you can make the game board change its size. Maybe you want them to do tic-tac-toe on a 5x5 five five board. There's lots of cool updates that you could do with this. So, you know, just use your imagination and give it a try. Um, the other thing is you probably want this code, so I'm going to include a link to the code uh, in the comments or under the description, I mean. Feel free to ask in the comments if you have any. Thank you so much for watching.